A very good evening to one and all present here. My name is Vedant Radha Krishnan and I will be a Master of Ceremonies for the, for the evening. On behalf of Sikasa, I extend a warm welcome to all of you here this evening for the session on memory technique. The storage capacity of the human brain is virtually limitless. A rough calculation by Paul Rubber, professor of psychology at the Northwestern University, suggests that the brain can store 2.5 petabytes, that's 25 lakh gigabytes. Memory is one tool which can substantially help us in our academic as well as our professional career. As students, memory plays a big role in our academic success. And as we are all CA students, it's safe to say that memory plays one of the biggest roles in our academic success. So, today's session will help us in learning the techniques to sharpen the powerful tool that is memory. Before proceeding to the session, I would like to invite the Chairman of Sikasa, Shesh Srinivas T, to welcome our Chief Guest, Dr. S. Prabhla, onto the stage. Information 
available on subject matter only thing you should put efforts and sit and study for your exams but this kind of skill sets once you learn it's a asset you can use it anywhere in any field that is the reason we are organizing this kind of program so hope you all learn. enjoy and learn this session thank you more tips thank you sir i now call upon ms lakshmi shenoy the vice chair of sikha sir to share the program overview Good evening, everyone. Um, so we had the welcome address. Then we had the welcome address by Ch Chairman of Sikasa, C. S. Srinivas sir. Of course, that we have a program overview which has been read read by me. And then the session starts at around 5:20. After the introduction of the session master, the session is there till 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock, you have a break for 15 minutes. Post that the session again resumes at 7:10, and we at 7:58 is when the session is expected to get over. Post that we have the word of thanks. Thank you. By eight years. Thank you. Thank you, Lakshmi. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. S. Ramla. Sir has completed his B.Sc., M.B.A., and Ph.D. Sir is an ex-State Bank of India official with more than three decades of work experience, where he specialized in foreign exchange and loans and advances. Sir has trained many a youth and adult in soft skills like memory development. public speaking effective communication stress management time management self esteem principles of human relations assertiveness training and many more as well as conducted several memory development sessions in schools and colleges sir is also a distinguished toast master which is the highest award by toast masters international the us which is an organization which specializes which specializes in making oral communication a worldwide reality Sir has trained many Toastmaster members in leadership and effective communication skills. Sir has conducted several youth leadership programs and speech craft programs on behalf of Toastmasters. Sir has also judged several international speech contests of the Toastmasters International at the club level, area level, division level, and the district level. Sir, we are all eager to soak in the knowledge that you are going to be instilling upon us. Please join me in welcoming Dr. S. Ramla. to take over the session Samuel Johnson said the true art of memory is the art of attention the entire memory is based on this philosophy the true art of attention of memory is the true art of attention unless you are attentive you can't memorize anything that's the basic requirement that reminds me it was a saturday afternoon like this normally where do you find people on saturday afternoons on brigade road pubs yeah pubs on brigade road mg road right Right or wrong? Yes, sir. So, a so-called memory expert like me was walking down Brigade Road on a Saturday afternoon like this. Very fortunate that all of you are using that time very appropriately now. But this memory expert was walking down Brigade Road. He saw a lady walking up Brigade Road. Very familiar face. he stopped her short in her tracks and he said madam let me identify you she said go ahead i think we met in the year 1988 at taj mahal in agra so the lady said i have been to taj mahal but that was not the year 1988 the memory expert felt sad that he failed he said madam give me one more chance to identify you he said i think we met in the year 1999 in rameshwaram she said i have never been to rameshwaram in my entire lifetime 
the so called memory expert failed for the first time. He said, Lady, I am sorry. I am not able to identify you. Can you tell me who you are? So the lady said, You bloody fool, I am your wife. <laughs> Very often, it may look like a laughable matter, very often we carry our mobiles in our hands and look for it all over the house. Very often, it happens to me as well, I keep the specs all over the house and start looking for it elsewhere. It happens to me today too, right? And I am talking about memory. And we are going to talk about memory techniques, not one technique, it's techniques. Right? Now what is this problem due to? It is not because our memory fails us. It is not because we have a bad memory. It is not because some of us have very good memory so that we get 99% in our exams. Not at all. Many of us think that we have poor memories. That is because we have been told by our parents, by our friends, by our teachers that your memory is poor. And the more often you listen to this statement, the more it becomes a reality. Because you tend to prove that. Especially when your parents tell you that, it has to be more truthful than anything else on this earth. Right? You tend to prove that. But let me tell you, there is nothing called bad memory or good memory. There is nothing called bad memory or good memory. If you can get this one point out of this session today, I think you will make a tremendous progress in the area of memory development. The point is, neither do you have bad memory, nor do you have good memory. You either have a trained memory, or you don't have a trained memory. There are only two possibilities. Either you have a trained memory or your memory is untrained. The day you accept that your memory is untrained, that means there is a possibility that I can improve my memory. Right? But once I say my memory is poor, my memory is bad, then it is done for good. I am not going to make anything about it to see that it improves. Right or wrong? Correct? The moment I believe that memory is bad, I'm not going to do anything about it because people have told me that. And I also tend to forget very often. Everywhere. Wherever, whenever, especially when it's required, during interviews, during exams, during I mean questions when questions are asked, I'm not able to I know the answer, but I'm not able to get it out at the appropriate time. So the, so please get this out of your mind today. It is from your mind today that your memory is bad or poor. Your memory is either trained or untrained. I accept that my memory is trained. So I, I, it does not mean I need not forget. And one more word that you should forget today. The word called forget. Forget to use the word forget. The reason is the moment you say I forget, it becomes of philosophy. Don't say I forget, say that I am not able to recall at the present moment. I am not able to remember at this point of time, right? If you get that point, then there is something that we can do about our memories, right? Right or wrong? So as you think, memory does not comprise of one component. It is not only just one component. There are three components to memory. The first one is registration, memory registration, the first point. I think one of you can help me in writing now, registration. The second point is remembering, second component of memory. First component is registration. Now unless I register, can I remember? Can I remember anything unless I register? That is why attention is the key point in developing your memory. If I don't have, if I don't, if I'm not attentive, if I don't listen to what is being said, then I don't think I'll ever improve my memory. Right or wrong? Right or wrong? Right. So first component is registration. 
first component of memory improvement. The second component of memory improvement is remembering. Once I register, what do I do then? Remember. How do I remember? By associating whatever I have learned at that point of time with what I already know. Now, how do you know something? How do you, when I say an apple, what happens to you? Suddenly, an apple appears in your mind. How did you register that fact? Because you have seen earlier how an apple looks. So, the moment I say apple, it, the image of the apple appears in your mind. So, you associate the word apple to the actual apple that you have seen. Correct? Association. So, that means, if I want to memorize something, I should associate whatever I want to learn with, I, with what I already know. Otherwise, I can't. Right or wrong? So, the moment I say apple, so remembering is very, very important. Whenever something is said, I will associate whatever is registered to what I already know. So, that is the second aspect component of memory improvement. Now, the third most important component which actually determines your success in life. Very, very important. And we seldom do anything about it. We seldom do anything about it because it's the most important aspect that defines our success, that determines how successful I am in life. And that is called recalling. Unless I recall whatever I know, whatever I remember, whatever I have registered at the appropriate time, I am cannot, I cannot become successful. Now where do you recall? You recall in the examination hall, whatever you remember. Well, where do you recall? When you are talking to audiences, right? When you don't have any points to, I mean, refer to, that is why you recall, right? And where else do you recall? At the point of interviews, interview, in an interview, when you are in a group discussion, right or wrong? Or when you are talking to your friends, you recall, or when you are talking to on a particular subject to, a, to your organization when you are discussing on any subject for that matter. So, the recalling is done either by talking or by writing. These are the only two methods of recalling, right? So, recalling has two processes, writing or speaking. Now, both determine your success, especially writing in exams. If I don't write the correct answer, I will not get the marks, full marks, right? So that is the reason why we have to do, what I am going to concentrate today on is not on your registration because remember, whatever you see, whatever you listen at any point of time automatically gets registered. It automatically gets registered in your mind. But the problem with us is we do nothing about remembering and we do nothing about recalling. How do I remember? By rehearsing it silently in my mind. I do the rehearsal silently, right? Remember, very often, without anyone around. Recalling is done when people are around, or in the examination hall, or something like that, right? So recall. Now, all my theory is of no use to you unless I demonstrate to you that recalling can be learned anytime, every time, and always. It can be done. I will try to run a demonstration exercise now of how to recall. I am going to ask you for certain objects. Okay? You are going to give me certain objects and I am going to memorize those objects and then probably recall. Whenever you ask me a question, I will be able to tell you. So now I request her to write down numbers from 1 to 30. One, so these are the three components that are required for memory improvement. One is registration. Remember, unless I register until she writes, okay, 10. 10 here, 10 there and 10 there, okay. So that you must be able to write objects after that. Without registration, I cannot recall anything, right? After registration, I have to continuously repeat, repetitive inside my mind. Rehearsal, I have to repeat it either silently or even orally to myself, right? So that is what is called remembering. Now the third and most important component which determines my success 
is recorded. Now, can I demonstrate that to you because I am so confident about talking that. Now, you may not believe it unless I really demonstrate it to you, correct? So, she is going to write down numbers from 1 to 30. Now, in these 1 to 30, you are going to give me objects. Okay, I am not going to provide you objects. You are going to give me objects. Objects that I can associate. You cannot give me objects that I cannot associate. Okay? Because memory is all about associating what I want to know with what I already know. Correct? If you give me some Chinese name, I will not be able to recall. <laughs> Kong Fung Kong. No, I won't be able to. Right? So you have to give me objects which I already know. Now, what, you, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to place those objects against the numbers that you, you decide which number it has to be placed again. Whoever gives me the object, also decide to place the object against a particular number, okay? And I will be trying to, trying to register, remember, and recall when you ask me to recall. Okay, until then I won't. Right? Okay. Now, who's going to give me the first object? Objects can be like fan, table, I mean, uh, wall, or wallet, girl, girl, wallet, yeah, wallet. wallet, anything, or pencil, board, whatever you want to. Also, this define where it has to be placed. So that I'm going to place that object against that number. And I'm going to recall, if you ask me the number, I'll give you the object. If you ask me the object, I'll give you the number. Right? And after that, let us see whether you can do it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the ultimate purpose of this uh, I mean, session is to see that you do it. My doing it is fine. You will say, sir, you have been practicing. Let me tell you honestly, I have not been practicing very often. I practice only whenever people ask me to give a demonstration like this. Until then, no. This I learnt in the year 1990. And whenever because it has got so ingrained into my system that whenever somebody asks me to do it, I can do it anytime. So it is a skill. Remember, memory is also a skill. It is not I mean, something that uh, strange. All of us can develop it, all of us can improve it. Right? Now, okay. Give me, I mean, and you don't have to stick in that particular order also. Give me the object and place the number against whatever number you suggest, I'm going to register that. Okay, but let there be no cross-programming. So when somebody is talking, let the other person not keep silent. So that there is no cross-programming. What happens then? Once cross-programming happens, I will not be able to recall correctly. Right. Okay, that girl. Yeah. Fast stuff. Fast, fast stuff. Oh, she wants, she wants fast stuff. Say, organizer, please remember. <laughs> Next time you have a session, please organize fast stuff. Number seven, fast stuff. Yes. Yes? 21 projector. 21 projector. Yes? Mike. 22. 22 mic. One, one. Let me also register and then, okay? 22 mic. Yes? Number 9 universe. Number 9 universe. Right? Yes? 25 memory. 25 memory. <laughs> For memory is also an object. Yeah? Number 1, Almighty. Almighty. Number 1, Almighty. Number 1 is always Almighty. Yes? Number 5, calculator. Number 5, calculator. Number 5, calculator. Yes? YouTube, you 19. 19, YouTube. YouTube, 19. Yeah. Yes? Cycle 17. Cycle 17. Cycle 17. Yeah, give me some time. Let me try to remember, okay? And then I will proceed further, right? I am going to ask you, but then you have to give me some time to remember as well. I have registered not all. 
but you have to give me time to remember so that I will be able to recall. Okay. Yeah. Number three, Laddu. Number three, Laddu. <laughs> so next time the organizers can think of Laddu, right? Three Laddu. Yes? 27 auditorium. 27 auditorium. Yes? 14 result. 14 result. <laughs> Even without the exam, he wants the results. 14 result. Yes? You have already given one, right? So let, let's give some other, somebody else. 15 houseboat. Yeah? 15 ah. houseboat. 15 houseboat. So he's telling me, you will now be able to recall this houseboat. Number 15, right? Houseboat, yeah. Number 18 institute. Number 18 institute. Number 18 institute, one minute, one minute. 18 is institute, yes. Yeah. 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 29, Sikasa. 29, Sikasa, right? Yes. Yes. Sir, can you state any number? Yeah. Can you state any number? Yeah. 5601. 5601. Yeah, where do, where do, where it should, where it should be placed? 13. <laughs> 13, 5601. You can leave some of the numbers blank so that I'll be confused. Right? You can leave some of the numbers blank. Yes? Any more? Yeah? <laughs> what is that? Which one? GSTR 3B. GSTR 3B. GSTR 3B 10. 10, right? Against 10, yeah. 10 GSTR 3B. Yeah. Yeah? 16 multiplexer. 16 multi. You will have to also tell the spelling if she doesn't know. Multiplexer. 16 multiplexer. Right? 16 multiplexer, yes? 23. 23. Podium. 22 is Mike, he is already gone to podium. 23 podium. <laughs> 23 is podium, right? Yes. Shall we leave some blank? You want to continue? Yeah. Six football. Six football. Six football, yes? Number eight, pronouncement. Number eight? Pronouncement. Pronouncement. What do you pronounce? What do you want to pronounce? Pronouncement. Eight. Eight is pronouncement. Yeah. Number twenty return. <laughs> Number twenty? Return. Return. What return? Just return. Yeah. GSTR three B is already there. Ten. Number twenty is return. Yeah. Eleven mobile. Eleven mobile. Twenty-six chairman. Present chairman. <laughs> Twenty-six chairman. Yeah, I think we'll uh, leave it there. Let me go through those uh, objects in my mind. I'm trying to remember, and then I will recall when you ask me to recall. Okay.
I think I can sit down for a while, no problem. I can't see anything, okay? Yeah, two of the objects I have not been able to register. Eight, what is that eight? Pronouncement. Pronouncement. Because it doesn't refer to any object, right? And twenty? Return. Twenty return. Twenty is return. Yeah. Yes. I think I am uh, ready. You can ask me return and pronouncement. Yeah. Yes. Yes? Number? Seven. The first object, pasta. Number 30. Number 30, blank. Number 9. Number 9, universe. That's mm -hmm. the one you asked. Number 29, 18. 29. Number one, 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 one by one. One by one. I mean, <laughs> 29 is auditorium. Ah, sorry, Sikasa. <laughs> Number 12. Number 12. Number 12 is blank. Number 24. Number 24 is blank. Number 3, Laddu. Cycle. Cycle 17. 22 is uh, Mike. Number, number 10. Number 10, 10 is GSTR 3D. Memory. Memory is 25. 9. 9 is Universe. Houseboat. Yeah, houseboat is uh, 15. Raise That's your, your object. Don't prompt out. Raise your hands. Yeah. Multiplex. Multiplexer. Multiplexer. I think I have lost out on that. What is multiplexer? 20? 16. 16. Multiplexer. Yeah, that I have got. I didn't actually register that. Yeah. Five Fine. 5601. 5601 is, uh, is 13. Chairman? Chairman. Chairman is 26. 21. 21 is projector. 6? 6. 6 is football. Yes, sir? Result is 14. YouTube. YouTube 19. Return. Return is 20. Calculator. Calculator is 5. Almighty. Almighty number 1. Blank. All are blanks. <laughs> there are so many blanks. <laughs> there are so many blanks. <laughs> Memory. Memory is 25. Podium. Podium is 23. 11. 11 is uh, mobile. 24. 24 is blank. 18 is institute. One is almighty. Do you want me to tell all the objects from 1 to 30 in that order? Or do you want me to tell, re repeat all the ob recall all the objects from 30 to 1 in the reverse order? 30 to 1. So I, this is very often when I ask a question of an audience, they always tell me this because the more he suffers, the more you enjoy. Correct? Let him suffer. Let's see whether he will be able to recall everything. Right? Okay, number 30 blank, 29 is auditorium, wrong, 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 29 is Sikasa, 28 is blank, 27 is auditorium, right, 26 is chairman, 25 is memory, 24 is blank, 23 is podium, 22 is mind, 21 is projector, 20 is uh, return, 19 is YouTube, 18 is institute, 17 is uh, cycle, 16 is multiplexer, 15 is houseboat, right? Then 14 is uh, result, 13 is 
Five six zero one, right? Twelve is blank. Eleven is mobile. Ten is GSTR three B. Nine is universe. Eight is pronouncement. Seven is pasta. Six is football. Five is calculator. Four is blank. Three is laddu. Two is blank. And number one is almighty. How did I do it? Yeah. Registering, remembering, and recalling. Now, the more often you do this recalling in front of audiences, or the, that is why you know that in colleges and schools, and even in the institute, they give you a lot of term exams. You know why do you have these terminal exams? To see that. You do well in your final exam. The intention of that is, but we don't take them seriously. We do it only at the end, right? That's why we don't really do well. The intention of these term exams is to see that your memory, the more, one more component of memory, if you want to improve it, is repetition. The very often you repeat whatever you want to learn, the more it comes to your aid. Now, it, if your repetition is more, it so much so, it happens so much so that even if you are not able to, your mind may go blank. But remember, if you are doing that repetition more number of times, even if your mind goes, goes blank, your lips will pronounce the answer. Even if the whole system goes blank, if you have right, if you have written enough number of times, the same question, if you have answered enough number of times, even if the whole system goes blank, your hand will be able to write the answer. Remember that. Every nerve cell of yours will remember what you want to remember. Now if you ask me, how long can I remember this? I can remember this as long as I want to. If, I, if you want me to forget it, this very minute, the very minute that I get out of this hall, I, will, I don't mind erasing all these objects. Because I will be ready for a new set of objects, for a new set of things to get into my system. If it is helpful to me, I will remember this any number of times. I will recall it any number of times. I will answer the questions any number of times. Right? So repetition is the key to a memory improvement. Another factor that you have to remember is repetition. Apart from all those three components, repetition, and then there is one more which I did while you were giving the objects that which you have to learn over a period of time it cannot be done overnight okay in three hours you can't learn I will try to make you do that but certainly you, you can learn it over a period and that is called visualization unless I visualize I will not be able to improve my memory visualization and association are the two key factors. Visualization and association are the two key factors for memory improvement. Right? Visualization and association. Associate with what you already know and then visualize. Now when you gave me the order, what I did was, this is called sequential filing of memory. Sequential filing. It is sequentially filed. Now, if you ask me exactly at once, it is like in your office, in their office, in the institute office, you have cabinets, right? Every file is placed in a particular cabinet. If you ask one of the officials in the institute, I want this file. If the chairman asks, I want this file, the executive there, he immediately pull out the right rack and give the file. Right? Does he, does he go on searching there? It doesn't search. Which rack does this file? Where does where's this rack? I mean, where's this file kept? No, he doesn't. Because he has serially, sequentially numbered them. And he knows exactly what in the first rack, what file did I keep? In the second rack, what file did I keep? In the third rack, what did Same thing I did with my memory. Now the problem with today's generation, let me tell you honestly, the problem with today's generation is we seldom use our memory cells. The reason is there is something called 
mobile. There's something called computer. I still maintain the old one. Now when you have a new one, it is even more useful to you. Right? You don't even refer to, you don't even know the meanings of certain words. You will always refer to Google. So Google has answers to everything. But when are you going to learn? When are you going to learn? Right? That's why there's a say, saying, I mean, if Google wants to refer, I mean, we refer, when we want to learn something, we refer Google. When Google wants to learn something, you know, whom they refer? They refer at radnikant.com. Radnikant knows better answers than Google. So never ever, I mean, if, you, if you're dependent on these gadgets, you will never do anything about your memory cells, let me tell you honestly. You have to work with them. You have to help them so that you will remember it for a long time to come. Right? So this is called sequential filing. Now let's see whether you can do it after, I mean, uh, the session. But before that, we will do what is called, let's see whether you can do it. There's another form of doing it and I'll introduce that to you and then we will run an exercise kind of thing. See whether we can do in both these areas. This is called this system is called pegging. This is called pegging. Peg peg means you know what peg pegging means doesn't mean this. <laughs> Most of the boys must be thinking pegging is like go to a bar and right? Today that too on a Saturday afternoon. Why sit in a memory class? Right? Go to a peg, go to a bar and have all memory will flow. <laughs> it will flow automatically, you know. And it flowed fluently with uh, wonderful English as well. Even the, Brit <laughs> even the Britishers will feel shy to listen to your language. Such is the kind of... I've seen people doing that. Right? So why not this system is called pegging. Pegging means peg in the word, I mean in the English language, peg means a hook. Now where do you, <coughs> let me ask you questions. Where do you place your shoes? In the house? Sure. Where do you place the toothbrush? There's a toothbrush stand. Where do you place your towel? You have, don't you, if you want a towel, what do you do? You immediately go to the hangar where you place the towel and when you want the toothbrush, you go to the toothbrush stand. When you want the shoe, where do you go? Shoe to the shoe rack. You don't look for the shoe rack, shoe in the, I mean, uh, toothbrush stand, right? <laughs> that is the reason why you forget where your specs are. Because you don't place them appropriately in their respective places. To improve, memory is a discipline that you have to inculcate. If you want to really improve your memory, it's a discipline. I have to place exactly where its place is. I cannot place my towel in the shoe rack and look for it all over the house. The reason why I fail to recall is not because my memory is bad, not because my memory is poor, it is because I fail to place them in the appropriate places. I fail to peg them where their real places are. Right? If you place them in your house, exactly where, where your books, books wherever they are supposed to be, can't you get them easily? Don't you think that's what they are doing in the offices, in organizations? Right? So it's a discipline that you have to inculcate. And this is called pegging. Now this type of memory is called, it's a temporary memory. If I want to, I can erase it the moment I get out of this hall. If you want me to remember tomorrow also, I can remember. If you want me to remember for one week, I can remember. If you want me to remember for one full year, I can remember. Right? I am in control of my memory. That means my memory is trained. If I fail to recall at any point of time, it means I have not done anything about registration or remembering that. It doesn't mean I am poor at that. My memory is poor. Okay? Get this fact into your head too. 
Nobody is born with a poor man. All of us are born as intellectuals. In fact, Buckminster Fuller said, all of us are born geniuses. The problem with us is, all the things around in our life, they de-genius us. Yes, that's what he says. We're all born geniuses, but we fail to comprehend that. Because everybody around tells us, you're poor, you're bad, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't, you have memory, I mean, you can't pass CA, you can't do this, you cannot get 99%, you can't. What does it matter? That means, why you can't get? Have you ever, did they ever tell you that? No. So that means, memory is the key for your success, okay? Remember, memory is the key for your success. So you do something about it. This is called pegging system. Now I'm going to teach you one system where I need your full cooperation, okay? Do you want to do this? Yes, sir. You want to do this? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Now, how I did it, I'll tell you first, so that you can learn that methodology and you can do it. Okay? Can you wipe it out, please? Yeah. What did I do? You gave me an object. You gave me, let's say, cycle. Where did you get? Huh? 17. 17. 17. 17 is cycle. You gave me cycle. Okay? What did I do? For 17, just like you have racks in the office, there is a rack. For 17, I have a box in my mind. I created a box, a picture. I have created a picture for 17. When you give me the cycle, the picture of the cycle is put into the, onto the picture of the number 17. So when you ask me to recall, I will see what did I place against 17. What was it that I placed? So I, the picture of cycle comes out. I didn't do, I didn't make any effort. As I was talking to you, I was able to remember one more plus point. As I was continuously talking to you, I was also able to peg it, peg it to the appropriate number, right? So that is, that is another plus point. Now that requires constant training yourself. You can do it. Let me tell you honestly, you can do it. And all of those, those who think, I mean people, some people say, as you grow older, your memory degenerates. Now let me tell you honestly, no, your memory never degenerates. It has been medically proven, even if you advance into old age, if I can do it, I mean I am retired, if I can do it, you should be doing it 100 times better, right? That means memory does not fade as you age. It, the, medically it is proven that only 5% of your memory cells die as you grow older. Only 5%. Not more than that. 95% is still available to you. I mean in old age. I'm talking about, now all the 100% is available to you. Okay? You are not doing anything about it. <laughs> all the 100% is 95% even into your late 90s. That's the beauty of memory. But we know, we do not know how to actually train it. That's the problem. Okay? Now can I have that uh, for 17, I have a picture, okay? Some picture, let's see. And on that, I place the cycle. So I will be able to recall the cycle. <laughs> so this picture, which I have for 17, is called the peg picture. Peg picture. For 17, it is always the same. My peg picture doesn't change. Whatever object you give, that may change. What I want to remember may change. This audience has given me cycle. Next audience may give me photograph. Right? So what I'm going to place, I'm going to place this photo on to 17. Peg picture. My peg pictures don't change. Picture, it's not visualization. Visualization means picturizing. Now whatever films you have seen, whatever cinemas you have seen, do you ever forget? No. You know. What? You also remember the scene where, uh, I mean, uh, so and so almost <laughs> kissed the hero, right? You remember that very, in, in detail you remember. By what distance they missed also you remember. <laughs> so that is the power of visualization. You are not using that, right? The power of visualization. 
you visualize pictures, okay, this is a picture and whatever you picturize, you will remember for a long time. Whatever you hear, it is called kinesthetic memory, through the ear. You may forget, you may remember. But whatever you visualize through the mind, the picturization, you will never forget in your life. So always try to picturize whatever you want to remember. So that in, in the examination how it flows, even if you want to by heart something, by heart something, the picture should flow in your mind. Exactly the words will flow as they are. You know, I had this capacity, even when I was young, I could reproduce the entire thing as it is, page-wise. I also know the page number. But later I realized there is no need of remembering all that. Why should I put all the unnecessary things in my head, right? So now I use only what is required. Exactly the words, they flow as they are. So that's picturization. I know exactly where ease appears on that page, in what line. So that is the kind, that is the power that all of you possess. All of you have that. Let me tell you honestly, all of you have that. But you don't know that. You have not realized that. You have not tested that. You have not trained yourself. And remember, when I was a kid, I never knew all, never knew all these processes of remembering things. This was never known to me. Recalling this, that and how big picture and nothing. I used to just visualize that, the whole thing used to appear. Now, now I am able to put it in a form and let you understand that. Right? Whatever I am telling you is what I have already experienced. That, so that you also can. So this is called big picture, which doesn't change. For each one of the numbers that are 1, 2, even 100, even for 100 I have a big picture. If you want me to remember something against 100, I can remember that object against 100 also. I have a big picture. Now, this, and this is a beautiful way of arriving at this big picture also. You want to learn that? Yes. That will take a little more time. Uh, I want to know what time. Okay. Seven. 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 How much more time? To? Six now. So, one hour we have up to seven. Very good. Very good. So, we, we want to learn that, we will do that also. First, let me see whether you can recall and then I'll teach you that, right? So this is take picture. For each one of the numbers you have take pictures. Whatever this is called peg objects. Whatever you give me, whatever I want to remember this is a peg object. Now peg object I place on the peg picture. So that I'm able to recall, right? How do I arrive at this peg pictures? I'll teach you that also is an art. Right? It is an art. And I'll also tell you which book to refer to in the end. So that if you want to further enhance, learn or practice, you can use that. Okay, let me but let me tell you honestly, nobody has become a good swimmer by reading all about swimming. <laughs> okay, nobody has become a good swimmer. You may know all the strokes, this beautiful strokes, best stroke. But when you are pushed into water, you don't know what it is. You know, the only stroke you know is drowning stroke. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, fake objects, fake. Now, okay. Now, I will give you some fake objects. Okay, one. Now, in school, you would have learned this. One run. 2 zoo, 3 tree. You have learned this? Yes. Those who have gone to, I mean, uh, convent, education in Bangalore or any convents, they would have learned this. The rhyming 1 run, 2 zoo, 3 tree, 4 door, 5 hide, 6 sticks, 7 heaven, 8 gate, 9 wine, 10 den. No? No, no. Okay, let me tell you. Okay, remember one. Run. They're all running words. Can you write it down, please? Yes, you can write it faster. I love to talk as well as it is. One run. run. Okay, close your eyes now. The, what I'm giving you now is only the peg pictures, not the peg words. I'm creating peg pictures in your mind. 
That means for one, it is always run. It never changes in your life. Therefore, your entire lifetime, the peg picture for one is run. Okay, can you see that? Yes. So that if I give you some object, you can place that object as though it is running. You can see that object running. Do you get that? That will come to later. Now, we are only visualizing now take pictures. Take pictures means for number one, it is run. Number one is run. 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 Number two is zoo. zoo. Three is tree. Four is door. Can you see four door? Yes. Five hive. You know what is hive? Beehive. Beehive. Five hive. Six sticks. Six sticks. Seven heaven. Seven heaven. When I say seven, you should visualize heaven. Eight gate. Eight is gate. Always gate. In your entire lifetime. Never change that. Nine wine. I think all the boys can visualize easily. Nine is wine. Not only it rhymes, it is also tasty. Number ten is den. You know what is den? Lion's den. Can you visualize lion's den? Yeah. Ten is den. Now I'll ask you questions. Can you tell me what is one? Two. Three. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Not enough. All of you should, in one voice, respond. Only then, remember, your vocal cords will, if you listen to them through your ear, your kinesthetic memory also goes up. It comes to your ear. Your visualization, this memory, plus your hearing memory, they club together. There's something called the third memory. Uh, which I am not aware. Feeling memory. When you feel, you can all the more recall better. We will go into that state probably later. Okay? Now, all of you, let's respond. Let's see. One, two, two three, three, four, four five, five, six, six, six seven, seven, eight, eight, nine, five, ten, ten. ten. Yeah. Now, can you? Visualize those spec pictures. That means for one, it's always running. You have always visualize. When I say, when I give you some object, let's say I give you some. Uh, what what object do you want and one? Phone. Now supposing I give you a phone. You imagine the phone running. Can you can you can you imagine? You can't. You can't. Phone running. So as the phone, not only you, your visualization should be so good. In fact, people who can tell stories are better visualizers. That is why Einstein has said, if you want a student to become intelligent, tell him fairy tales. What are fairy tales? Stories. That too, imaginary stories. If you want the student to become more intelligent, you know what he said? Tell them more fairy tales. That's all. A person who gets same person is a person who can visualize. Same person in any exam. Who can visualize, who can see the pictures. He doesn't need to go back to book. He doesn't need to refer to Google. The more often you refer to Google, you are killing, you're killing your memory cells. Therefore, for the first time, when you want to understand something, so don't make it a habit. Don't make it a habit. Only for the first time. 
you understand. Even there, I would suggest that you work hard to understand the meaning of the word even without Guru. You can tell. You can understand the meaning of the word. Do you know that there is something called context clues? Yes. By understanding the meaning of the sentence, you can understand the meaning of the word that you did not know in the sentence. Do you know that? Yes. You don't have to go to Google. Google doesn't. Google is, uh, I mean, has answers for all questions, all your questions, not all. But you will become a lame person. You know what is being lame? When, it, when your memory will become lame, you will always refer to Google. Google is there. Be confident that if you don't know something, there is already some, always something to refer back to. You don't require a teacher, you don't require a guide, you don't require anything. There is always something to refer. Right? You can always refer to Google. If you don't. Have that confidence. But the first and primary factor that you should inculcate in yourself is to use your memory cells and not somebody else's. Somebody else has already input that data there. He has used his, uh, you are actually allowing him to improve his memory cells. The person who has put his input data there. Correct? What are you doing about yourself? You, you possess that. What I want to tell each one of you is that all of you possess, you are born with that gift, but you are not using it. Even I didn't know. I learned over the years that we are all born geniuses, like Buckminster so Fuller says. He was a mathematician. Remember, a mathematician saying that we are all born geniuses. But the factors in life, there are factors in life which be geniuses. We have to we guard ourselves against that. <coughs> right? And memory is one thing that gets be genius. Okay, who means? Two. Always two. Two is two. If I give you an object, let's say anything, what do you want to give against two? Zebra. Zebra naturally, I mean that's an easy way of uh, Zebra naturally, probably you can be taken there. Right? Or any other name, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can visualize that person in this room. Right? Two means zoom and that whatever object you want. Uh, sorry, you'll have to edit that. <laughs> you <should have recorded. laughs> right. Three is three, four is low, five is high, six is six. So you have to visualize that. When I say seven, it's only here. Yeah. So now I'll give you objects. Will you be able to peg them? So these these are the pegs. These are your racks in which you're going to place the objects that I'm going to give you now. Will you do it? Yes, sir. You will be able to do it. You want to do it? Yes, sir. I want a firm yes from our Yes, sir. Yes. yes. You know, I saw a movie in, uh, I mean, in the English language called An Officer and a Gentleman. In that movie, the trainer, you know who the trainer is? Trainer is just a sergeant in the naval force. Sergeant, just a child. Sergeant is an ordinary kid, kind of. He's the trainer. And all those new recruits, those who are newly recruited into the Navy, they are going to be officials. They have, they have joined with the official cadet. So they are being trained by an ordinary sergeant. Trained. You know, as long as the training is going on, how firm the sergeant is with them, they are going to, he knows very sh for sure that those I mean, uh, officer, they are going to become officers someday when they get graduated, when they get the certificate. They can take revenge against him. But still, he doesn't give in because that's the kind of training he gives. You know, when he asks, whenever he asks a question, he wants a firm yes or no. He says, do you want to, he will ask a question, do you want to do it? Yes. Yes, sir. That's the kind of response you should do, Even if it's no problem, do you want to do it? Yes. No, sir. What is important is the firmness with which you can do something about your memory only if you are firm. It's a discipline, right? That we are trying to inculcate in ourselves. Okay. Now, shall we? You want to do it? Yes, yes sir. Close your eyes. You want to close your eyes or keep your eyes open? I did it keeping my eyes open. Because 
I can watch as well as pet the objects. But I don't know whether you can. Because you will be watching the next door neighbor. What is he doing? What is she doing? What is happening? Whether the fan is rotating properly. Whether somebody is laughing, smiling, wearing specs, girl or boy. Right? If you have all these distractions, your memory will not work. That's why I said in the beginning, the art of memory is the art of attention. That's all, simple. And attention in the Navy and Army, you know what it is. And this leg is not all right. In spite of it, I did it for me. <laughs> right? So the art of attention is the art of memory. Right? Let, let me see. You Please keep your eyes closed initially. Maybe as you become experts, you can keep your eyes open and then Memorize. Okay? The first object is... No, no, not that. <laughs> Those are fake objects. Those are fake, fake, and the fake pictures, sorry. Fake pictures, don't tell anyone what about fake pictures. I'm teaching you now, okay? You, when you do this memory exercise in front of people, don't tell them this. You should appear like a magician. <laughs> like I appeared to you as a magician. When I did that recalling of all those objects. Okay? So you should appear, you don't tell them what process you adopted unless you are running a workshop or teaching someone. Okay? So these are peg pictures which you should which should be permanent in your permanently placed in your mind. Now what I'm going to give you is peg objects. Where you're going to place these objects onto those peg pictures, and I'll ask you what, what was one, and you will be able to tell me. Okay, one radio. Can you visualize radio? One, radio running. Two, aeroplane. Two, aeroplane. Three, lamp. Lamp, L-A-M-P. You know what a lamp is? First you must understand the object also, otherwise you will not be able to recall. Am I a little fast? Yes. You want me to slow down? Yes. Four is secret. Five telephone. Six chair. Chair, C H A I R, chair. chair. Don't strain yourself. Just visualize. I know some of you are holding the eyes tightly. As though it's going to stick there. The object. Seven is horse. Eight egg, E G G egg. Nine P P P P that you bring.
10 is flower. Flower. Can you visualize the flower? Do you want me to repeat the words again? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Okay. So that you can go through your mind so that you rightly take them. Number one. Number two. Number three. Number four. Number five. Number six. Number seven. Now some people are saying, after the whole group says chair, somebody else says there. <laughs> there. So that I should also appear there as well. Chair, <laughs> when the whole group says chair, then I'll say in the end, okay, after the chair means <laughs> Okay, number nine. Please. Number nine is? Please. Very good. Number 10. Uh, okay, now I'll ask you random. At, in, at random. Okay, 7. Pass. 4. Six. Six. 2. Yep. 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 T. 9. Dress. No. 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 So you're not picked. So that means you're becoming good. That means you're able to place the right object against the right egg picture. So, and remember, this is one of the best ways. You don't need to go to a meditation class. You don't need to attend any, I mean, the spiritual lectures. This is the best way to improve your concentration, best way to improve your meditational skills. Yes, this is the, what you are doing is meditation, nothing but meditation. What is meditation? Focusing on a particular thing for a long time, in spite of the distractions around. This is true meditation. And if you meditate like this for your exam, nobody can stop you from securing highest marks. Why do you think people study? I, the other day I saw NEET or some exam. One girl said she studied for 13 hours a day. 13 hours a day. Why don't you and I do that? Yeah? Are you studying 13 hours a day and she is ranked and that is she is from Bihar. That means memory is nothing but can you link that memory is nothing but repeating, repeating and repeating. The more often you repeat, the more strong your memory is. The more it gets strengthened. The more, I mean, when someone asks me to do a talk like this, the more sessions I do, the more stronger my cells are becoming. I don't do it otherwise. Never do it. I never do it at all. Never. I've never done in the last, I mean, maybe from 2000 onwards, probably hardly I have done 15. Times, maybe 10 to 15 times, from 2000 till now, yearly once. You can imagine, that means to acquire this skill, it requires about 2 to 3 months. Hard, three, three months of hard work from you, so that it becomes impregnated into your mind. So the moment you know this art, the moment you know the process, all that you have to do is just do it, finish it, that's all. And it can be done anytime. Even in the middle of the night you ask me to pick some words, I can get up and do it. That is the confidence that you should develop. The first and foremost thing that you need to develop in memory is your confidence. You should know that I am capable of remembering anything in this world. I can do it if I want to do it. I don't do it, that is why I don't get it. Right? Right? So if, if I'm not doing well, it means I am responsible. If I am doing well, I am responsible. Same is true of memory. So there is nothing called poor memory or good memory. All you have is trained memory or unmade memory. So I could train you in 
a few minutes, right? So this is one way of any object I can do, get it, okay? Like 20 objects, 30 objects, 40 objects, 100 objects, find an object, do constantly training. This is called pegging, right? You did pegging. There is one more method which is very, very and, uh, important to you as students, in fact. It will help you more in your exams. This also helps you. Where does this help you? How does this help you? This system? Yeah? Numbers of sections. Yeah? Yeah? Numbers of sections. Yeah, numbers of sections. Yes, good. Numbers of sections. You can link that meaning of that section to the number. If you have a peg picture, you can, nobody can erase it. For life, the sections don't change. Are they going to change every now and then? Once there is a Congress government, the section changes. The government section changes. Sections are constant, right? So for life. That is what. That's okay. That's okay. Then they act fine. They are empowered to do that. But can change so. Sections, once you get this big picture, put those sections in where you want. And where else can you use? Sequential order. Sequential order, remember anything in sequentially. When, you will, when uh, housewives go for shopping list. <laughs> Even men, because housewives don't go today, they give list to them. <laughs> men misplace the list and it's gone. All memory is blank. They can memorize the list and then go. You, you can try it. One of the ways of I mean, uh, using this technique. When you're going out for shopping, or uh, another place where you can use this, when you're talking to audiences, you have certain points. What is my first point, second point, third point, fourth point, fifth point, sixth point? So I have a big picture. Once the, I've exhausted the first point, I go on to the second point. I don't need to carry notes. Correct? I don't need to carry. Of course, you're allowed to carry points, not all. But why don't you train yourself? <coughs> You have umpteen opportunities. You don't say, no, no, I, I don't get an opportunity. I have to write only an exam to strengthen my memory. I don't have to write exam, right? I can use it anywhere. Then, where else? Birthdays. Yeah, birthdays, yes. Especially if you want to remember your girlfriend's birthday. You get it wrong. So what you do is you pick it. Okay. It can never get erased. She may forget her birthday, you will never forget. Right or wrong? Then, any other? Any other place? Standards. Huh? Standards. Standards, yes. Standards. Then? Remember headings and submittings. Headings and submittings, yes. Then? Huh? Due dates, yes. Percentages. Percentages. Due dates. And where, and not only that, years of war. It's history, in history. You want to remember in which year the year war was fought? Most common thing that we need to, but again you don't use use uh, your memory cells there. What do you do with this? What do you do with this? Registering no. one lakh. All the mobile numbers you register. What are you doing with your memory cells? It becomes zero. Correct? Yes. Earlier I was using, no, earlier when this was not there, I used to use my memory techniques to recall any telephone number. But now, Everything is recorded here, so this is become black. Right? Yeah, you are saying something? When we have storage devices and all, why we should use our memory for this thing especially? Like for the world situation. Correct. Now American, okay, that's a good question. Yeah. When you have storage devices, why should you use your now let me tell you the less you use your memory, the less your system works for you. So the devices are that they are all aids to your memory. They are not the ultimate. Who has put in the messages there, who has put in information there, it is me. In fact, if you ask me honestly, most of the Americans, even to calculate 3 into 4, they use a calculator. Are we so dull, dumb? God has given us the gift of the cells. You know what? If you don't use them, what happens to those cells? They die. Cells multiply. The more you use, the more they multiply. You know that cell multiplication. Whatever we are, we have, we have come from one cell. 
the more you use them, the more it multiplies. Now, where are we using our intelligence? Where are we using our memory? Where are we using our alertness? Where are we using our attentiveness? Right or wrong? Your, I mean, intelligence, where do you use? Your intelligence is stored in storage devices? No, it's true, it's stored, it's stored in <coughs> somebody has stored it. Now, what happened to my intelligence? Where's my original intelligence? If Einstein had depended only on storage devices, you would not have got E is equal to MC squared. The world would not have advanced so much. No, I'm just giving it. Doesn't mean what you say is wrong. What I mean to say is, you storage devices are helpful devices. They are only an aid to my memory. They are not me. I am above all of them. I am the one who has input all the data there. I am more intelligent than that. Yes, the whole of it is done by us. I want you to understand that you possess you are a storage device yourself, you can store. Einstein has said he has used only 10% of his brain. Now if Einstein has used only 10%, what percentage are we using? So, imagine what you are capable of, what I am trying to, along with memory, what I am trying to inculcate in you is that you are capable of higher things. You can capable of doing better things. Yeah. How do you define the word revision? Revision. Yeah. Revision. Yeah. 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 Revision is repetition. Yeah. There are many ways, correct. There, that's one question he has asked. How do I revise? Now why is revision how is why is revision important? Revision is as I said, repetition yes. is the key to memory retain retainment. If you want to retain whatever you have learned. To retain that, repetition is the key. Revision. How does revision, how do you do revision? What are the methods that you employ? To revise? You talk to friends, you write exams, you talk to audiences. Anyway, in fact, if you ask me honestly, if there is a life changing event, anything that I want to remember, if, there, if it is life changing for me, I will suspend all my talks and I will discuss only that with everyone on earth. Yes. Because that's going to change my life, the course of my life. That is the vision. Eat, sleep, die cricket. And people can use that. Eat cricket, sleep cricket, live cricket. Can't you? Eat to your subject, live your subject, die with your subject. That is memory boss. Nobody can erase that. That's the beauty of memory. It remains with you. The more you repeat, the more you revise, the more it When I talk to my friends, I When I talk to my brother, I do that. They, even to the point of disappointing my the other person. I should do it. Because you should, that doesn't mean you should disappoint the other person. In fact, one of my friends, to memorize his first talk, he took 150 times he practiced. You know, he practiced some uh, maybe 10 to 15 times in front of me. I was uh, his lone uh, I mean, victim. <laughs> Tenth or fifteenth time, I knew all the words in his talk more than he did. So after that, he switched the, the audience. He said, Okay, this guy is getting bored. So he switched the audience. You know, he had two dogs in his house. <laughs> he practiced his talk 150 times in front of his dogs. <laughs> He became an expert. It looked like he was born with that talk. The first day when he appeared to talk to audiences, it appeared to us that he was born with the talk. It was not so. He didn't know anything at all. Now, unfortunately, or for, fortunate, unfortunately for the dogs, they died. <laughs> Don't ask me of what. Of probably of boredom. Listening to the same same talk every day. <laughs> Let me die. <laughs> what the dog died in? That's what he says. I don't know how much of it is true. But probably true. So the more you repeat, the more you revise, the more you discuss, the more you write, the more you talk of what makes a difference to you, the more it becomes you. That is my opinion. Every nerve cell of mine 
can't define only that. If I want to memorize something, beautifully I will memorize the whole of it. The whole of it. Yeah? As it is word for word, I can memorize. So you can do it. So that is the beauty of Okay. Now what is the next? You got it now. What is the next thing that we have to do? Take pictures. So man, that is done. We are done. We are going to the next subject. The next way of this pegging is over. All of you are good at it, right? You think you are already experts? Yes. <laughs> yes yeah, you are yes. experts. Uh, how do you link the phrases of words, a sentence, with this phrases? Phrases of? Phrases of words. Yeah. Like commerce, you know, like this. Yeah. There are a lot of number of accounting standards, like cutting accounting standards, and others also. Uh, chapter sub chapter, topics of topics. How do we? Uh, I will come to that next uh, next uh, method. This technique is called pegging technique. Okay, pegging doesn't mean this. It means putting it whatever I want to remember. I put it with the right, right hook and pick it up. And now I want pegging. So the second method, you want to try it in the beginning and then. Uh, or we will try in the beginning, okay? And then I will want you to drop this, write whatever I am telling them, okay? Now this is the best method for students. You ask a question, how to memorize phrases, yeah? I'll tell you the name of the method afterwards. Keep your eyes closed. I want you to completely cooperate if you want to develop this skill and this skill is very useful to you as students. The first one is magical. You can stun anyone. The second one is more useful to you as students. Okay, what I am telling you right now. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and visualize whatever I am telling you. Visualize without questions. You have to visualize. And don't open your eyes until I ask you to open them. Right? If you open your eyes, you are only deceiving your memory, not me. You are deceiving the capability of your memory. Okay? okay? Here it goes. Imagine that you are walking in a jungle. You are walking in a jungle. Can you see yourself walking in the jungle? Yes. yes. Can you visualize? Yes. 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 Yeah. Those who, those who can't visualize cannot improve their memories. That I can <laughs> certify. Okay. Imagine that you are walking in a jungle. And as you are walking through the jungle, you find that there is a marriage taking place there. <laughs> jungle and marriage? You wonder. Can you write it in capitals? So that they can see. Can you see the marriage taking place there? Okay, once you see the marriage taking place, what is your next uh, step? You would like to enter that, right? So you enter the marriage hall. As you are coming out, they give you a big mango instead of coconut. Because the jungle is full of mangoes, not coconuts. They give you a mango instead of a coconut, okay? Now, once you receive this mango, you feel like cutting it. Because you want to know what is inside. So you cut it. You don't have uh, the regular I mean, instrument. You use the scissors. You have scissors with you. You cut the mango with scissors. Can you visualize yourself cutting the mango with scissors? Yes, sir. So as you cut the mango with scissors, gold coins fall out of it. Not the mango pearl, gold coins. Yeah. Inside only, you can't get gold coins also. <laughs> gold coins fall out of it. As the gold coins fall out of it, you normally you eat, feel like eating. So you eat this and then the gold coin gets stuck in your throat. Can you see your throat? Can you visualize your throat paining? <coughs> your throat, okay? Now since the throat is paining, you call for a doctor. Call for a doctor. You look for a doctor. Okay? What was that? <laughs> okay. 
Now I want you to keep your eyes closed. Please do not open them until I ask you to open them. Okay? Where are you there? I want you to answer in one voice. Whatever question I ask you. Never open your eyes until I ask you to open them. Where were you in the beginning? Jinder. What was taking place there? Marriage. What did they give you the marriage? Oh. What did you cut it with? Jesus. What fell out of it? Oh. Where did it get stuck? Oh. Whom did you look for after that? Oh. Yeah, we'll continue with the story. Keep your eyes closed and visualize further. Okay? The doctor happens to be from the Middle East. He's coming on a camel. Can you see the doctor on a camel? Yes. 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 Now you also see that the doctor not only is on a camel, he's reading a newspaper. There's a big newspaper in his hand. You can visualize the newspaper? Yes. yes. And you you're wondering what is inside the newspaper that is so interesting and the doctor is looking into it. You also look into the newspaper and the front page contains the photograph of Vijay Malia. Wow. Can you see Vijay Malya? Yes. yes. Vijay Malya is not of uh, United Spirits. Vijay Malya of Kingfisher Airlines. Can you see him? Yes. Yeah. He, was, he also owns that. Now once you think of Vijay Malya, what do you relate him to? Oh. Aeroplane. Not Lika. <laughs> Aeroplane. Link him. You link, link him to? Can you see Vijay Malya in the aeroplane next? Yes. yes. So you also enter this aeroplane and you find that all the passengers are monkeys. <laughs> all the passengers are monkeys. Now among these monkeys there is one girl. Also there is also one girl. Can you see the girl? Yes. Girls, boys can always see girls there. They are saying yes even before I ask them. Okay, I ask you questions from the beginning. You should answer me yes. in one voice. Were we in the beginning? Yes. What was taking place there? Yes. What did they give you in the marriage? Yes. What did you cut it with? Yes. What fell out of it? Yes. Where did you get stuck? Yes. Who did you call after yes. that? Yes. Doctor came on what? Yes. Yes. What was he reading? Yes. Yes. Whose photograph was there? Yes. Where did you see him next? Yes. Yes. Who were the passengers of the ceremony? Yes. Among these monkeys, there was one. Further, okay, keep your eyes closed. Right? The girl got scared because all the passengers are monkeys. She got scared. And she's called out for police. Police, police. Can you hear her voice? Screams? Police. Police. See, already somebody is calling for police. Police came with torches in their hands. Because the aeroplane was dark, they came with torches. Can you see her? Police coming into the airplane with torch in their hands. Yes. Each one had one torch. So torches in their hands. And as they stormed the airplane with torches, one of the torches fell down and the airplane went for a big explosion. Can you hear the explosion? Yes. Sir. Can you see the explosion? Yes. Sir. Can you see the smoke? Yes. Sir. In your mind's eye. All this has to be done in your mind's eye. Yes. The more you do it, the better your memory cells will become. Okay, I'll ask you questions again. Where were you at the beginning? Yes. What was taking place there? Yes. What did they give you? Yes. What did you cut it with? Yes. What fell out of it? Yes. Where did it get stuck? Yes. Whom did you call after that? Yes. Doctor came with? Yes. What was he reading? Yes. Yes. Photograph was yes. Yes. Vijay Malya was seen next? Yes. Who were the passengers of the yes. Among these monkeys? Yes. Girl, girl got scared and she shouted. Police. Police came with torch. Torch fell down and explosion. Explosion. Now visualize the whole thing in your mind. Don't open your eyes for a few minutes. The whole thing you have to visualize. Imagine. Visualize. Think. For a few minutes. Can you see the whole sequence of events? Yes, sir. Yes. Until the explosion? Yes. yes, sir. Okay, open your eyes and look at the board.
My God, you all become experts in memory. <laughs> How many words are there? 16 words are there. 16 words you memorized, not even in 5 minutes. Do you require anyone to teach you what memory is all about? I can go now. You can go for it. I think he is ready, right? Mango ready. Mango ready. Somebody wanted Ladu. All the 16 words you memorize, monkey donkey business. Not even one word related to the other. Who is that person who can recite all the words without looking at that board? Please come. If it is wrong, stop it, okay? Yes, repeat from the beginning again. Jungle, marriage, mango, scissors, gold coin, throat, doctor, camel, newspaper, vijayamada, aeroplane, monkeys, a beautiful girl. <laughs> Charges, 
just explosive. Good. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, even a German would like to try. Marriage, mango, Caesar, gold coin, throat, doctor, camel, uh, newspaper, Vijay Malia, monkeys, girl, aeroplane. Okay. Don't tell. Can you help someone when he or she is in the bathroom? <laughs> Don't help him. Yes. Yes. Use his memory cells. Right. You can try reverse. <laughs> memory is. All about your doing. Okay? Don't depend on as long as you depend on somebody else, then you, you are not doing anything about your doing. That's what happens when you depend on so is the electronic gadgets. I keep telling my son, don't depend on electronics. Use them as helpful devices. Use them when you want to refer. But they are not your ultimate. You are the ultimate. In fact, you can define them. Right? What what happens is that is why most of the American population, I think they are zombies. They always depend on electronic gadgets. They depend on Indians and Chinese for their existence. Most of the, I mean, people in the top ranks, the US, scientists, they are all Indians and Chinese. Because we are intelligent race, we are an intelligent race, so use it. Don't let it go down the drain. Okay, who else? Yeah, come. I want you to edit whatever is un I mean not to be <laughs> it will okay, be the hard one is to be edited easily. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah start. Okay, jungle, marriage, mango, scissor, uh, gold coin, throat, doctor, camel, newspaper, Vijay Malia, aeroplane, uh, monkeys, girl, police, torch, explosion. It's just visualizing the whole thing the other way around. Explosion, torch, police. Yeah. Explosion, torch, police, gold, monkeys, aeroplane, Vijayamalaya, newspaper, camel, doctor, throat, gold points, monkey, marriage, Jew. How does it help you by reversing the order? No, if you can do it the other way around, if you can do it with a lot of strain, if you can recall the whole thing with a lot of strain, how does forward look? Cake walk. You can memorize anything. I'll give you something, I mean, after the break, I'll give you a, uh, when, uh, some message I have written down. Let's see how many of you are able to memorize that. Okay? <laughs> Anybody else would like to try before we break? Time for break, yeah. Thanks. The last person. You, you want to try? You are done. Yeah, come. You want to try? I want to try in reverse order. Yeah. Explosion, torches, police, girl, monkeys, Vijay Malia, aeroplane, aeroplane, Vijay Malia. Yeah. Aeroplane, Vijay Malia, newspaper, camel, doctor, throat, gold coins, scissor, mango, maris and zangit. Yeah, that is why, you know, athletes practice on the sand beaches. You know why? When they come to plain ground, it looks like cakewalk. When you try the reverse order, that's why when I ask the audience, do you want me to tell you reverse or do you want me to tell you? Because if I do it reverse, forward looks very easy. They practice on the sand beaches because they run against this resistance. So on the plain ground, it looks like they are walking actually. Are. All of you will become Hussein Bolt in memory if you can do that. If you continue to practice some more reverse memory technique, if you continue to practice some more, you will become Radnikas. You know how? Radnikas, even before he starts, he is at the destination. <laughs> that is a <laughs> He just needs, he just needs to, he vaporize and... Okay.
That is how it will become in memory. Okay? All the best, you have T and K. Can you register on the table there? You can do so after the session. Also, on, on 21st of June, we have our International Day of Yoga Celebration. So, as you can see on the slide, and also, uh, <coughs> there's, uh, there's more information about it on Facebook, and also you'll be receiving pamphlets about it. So, to all of you are welcome. Please come and attend the event. For you. Thank you. So, welcome back. After that, uh, I don't know whether the break was refreshing or the session was refreshing. <laughs> However, welcome back after the break. Refreshing break, right? Fine. This system is called linking method. This is called linking. What do you do here? You link one first word to the second one, second one to the third, third to the fourth, fourth to the fifth. Not fourth to the sixteenth one. So you want to know what is the sixteenth one, you want to know what is the fourth one. Independent. Right? Unless you know the whole story, you will not be able to recall all the words. Now where is this used? This is called linking method. What I taught you first was painting. Okay? Where is this used? Audit procedure. Narrating a story. Yes, audit procedure, yeah. Narrating a story. Yes? Steps. Steps, yeah. One, one after the other. Yes. Derek Girai, one after the other. Then? Remember keywords. Yeah, beautiful. I think he's got, he's hit the nail on the head. Keywords. These are the keywords, okay? Anybody else has anything else to Compliance say? Procedures. Compliance procedures. Yes. Then, step by step. Then, where can you use this? Especially, I'll come to yours, that's the main crux of the whole thing. Railway stations, one after another. To remember railway stations. <laughs> I don't know why you have to remember railway stations. <laughs> However, if it is going to alter the course of your life, please remember railway stations. <laughs> Yeah, because railway decisions will take you to different destinations, right? So it can change the course of your life. Okay. Now, where else can you use? Anybody else? We will come back to that. Keywords. Name of countries. Name of countries. Name of countries. Yeah, name of countries also. Now, where, this can be used in, for subjects which are uninteresting. Yeah? Yeah, anything. Uninteresting. How do you do that? Like he said, keywords. Now, in every chapter, how many paragraphs are there? I cannot make you do that exercise because I have brought, uh, normally I would uh, want you to do one chapter, I'll give you a chapter, you will uh, bring out the keywords and then link the keywords. So that the entire chapter is at your disposal. You don't need to depend on anyone. Right? Entire chapter, keywords, once you know the keywords. But in each chapter, how many, what, are, what are they? What are they? Every chapter has, every book has certain chapters, certain number of chapters. Every chapter has a certain number of paragraphs. Every paragraph has one keyword. If you know the keyword in the paragraph, can't you repeat the paragraph? You are all experts in writing stories, telling stories, right? Writing, telling stories. Who's good at who's bad at telling stories? Nobody. I don't think anybody is bad at telling stories. All of us are good, especially when we do something wrong. <laughs> Why don't you use it for something good? Here? Head to the office. Yeah, head to the office. You different. You say, you tell the boss. Hundred times my grandmother died. <laughs> Same grandmother. Same grandmother. <laughs> How does he know he is the boss of the office? <laughs> if 
will reply to getting the responses from his employees. Same grandmother died hundred times. Okay, Mr. Right? So keywords are the key. Once you get the keywords, you can repeat the entire chat, I mean paragraph, in your own words. That is what I mean, multiple keywords are the paragraph. Keywords also. But preferably have only one keyword. One keyword which gives you the gist of the entire paragraph. Not just don't pick up a keyword just because you are familiar with it. Just because you like it. No. Pick up a keyword which relates to the entire paragraph. So once you see the keyword, jungle. Why did I pick up jungle? Then the entire paragraph will come into my mind and I write it in my own words. What does what do you I mean except where you have these numbers to be related where you can use the pegging system. Otherwise you don't have to remember numbers, right? You have to only understand and write it in your own words. That's what is called paraphrasing. All of you are good at paraphrasing. You have the command of the language. Whatever command you possess is more than enough. More than enough. Don't worry about that. Whatever you already possess is more than enough. What you need to remember is, can I recall the keyword in the paragraph? Now once I get the keyword, why did I write jungle? I'll be easily able to explain why I wrote jungle. Why did I write throat? So I know it. Once you write down the keywords and link the keywords by means of a story. Yes, different stories. Different stories, yeah. You can't have the same story for every chapter, right? Each chapter has one story. How many stories, I mean, how many chapters will be there in each book? 50. 50. 15 stories, you can't remember? Can't you make 15 stories? You see hundreds of films every day every year. And you remember what Madhuri Dikshit did to Shah Rukh Khan. You remember the scene appropriate time also. What do you Can't you see that in your mind's eye? You can create, you are the master storyteller. You can create that story in your mind. So once you get, yes, jungle. What, what jungle means? The whole thing should flop to explosion. So the question comes in the example, I mean in the exam, write something about the jungle. So all those points you write down beside, explain one after the other. Those chapters, the examiner will think, oh wow, what are he's vomited. And you won't have time to read all of that. You are, and you are not going to write big story, big chapter, big over each one of them. You are going to do points only. Each point, elaborate. You are not going to write big thing. So you say, okay, full marks. 16 marks for the question, 16 full marks. Because every paragraph has been represented in the answer. So that is the beauty of this. You can use this for all the subjects that you dislike, also for subjects you like. For subjects you like, it's easy. It's much easier to remember. Correct? When you don't like a subject, this is the process to be adopted. So this is called linking. Now having done that, I want I want to give you an exercise, okay? On linking. Now I have helped you in uh, linking. I've been uh, I mean, like the uh, what do you call uh, facilitator processing the whole thing? I have given you the whole story and masala and all that. Now you have to create the masala, you have to tell the story. Okay? I will give you words, you create your own story and then and do it in groups. I wanted to do it in groups. How many are there in each one of the. I think this will form one group for me. Seven.
टेलीफोन सिगरेट नेल टाइपराइटर शू माइक्रोफोन पेन टीवी प्लेट कार और ब्रिक पेपर बॉटल बेड फिश चेयर विंडो टेलीफोन सिगरेट नेल टाइपराइटर शू देन माइक्रोफोन देन पेन टीवी प्लेट कार पॉट एंड ब्रिक न्यूज़पेपर, बॉटल, बेड, फिश, चेयर, विंडो, टेलीफोन, सिगरेट, नेल्स एंड टाइपराइटर, शू, शू ओके माइक्रोफोन, पेन, टीवी, प्लेट, कार, हॉट ब्रिक्स। कॉटन, पेपर, बॉटल, बेड, फिश चैट विंडो टेलीफोन नाइल नाइल टाइपराइटर शू माइक्रोफोन सॉरी पेन पेन टीवी प्लेट कार पॉट ब्रिक
Um, he was watching TV at that time. Uh, he threw a plate at the TV. <laughs> Immediately uh, he, heard, he heard the sound of car. Uh, it hit a pot and with, uh, with that I made a brick. So I was walking on the carpet with a paper in my hand to collect the water bottle to quench my thirst. Then I moved towards my bed but I figured out there's a fish in my water bottle. So I sit in the nearby chair which is near a window and then I get a telephone call. So I just answer it and then I smoke a cigarette up. And then I hear the nail sounds but when I figure out it's not the nail but the typewriter working. And then I see there's no one around except a shoe, uh, just a shoe lined out. So I pick up the microphone to call the police and I take down the pen to note down the details. Meanwhile, I also see that the, te the TV is switched on automatically and the plate breaks. So I just run out of the house to move towards the car and I keep my keys in a pot and cover it with a brick. <laughs> If you link the words in a plain manner, you will not be able to recall for a long time. So the association has to be always out of proportion. Whenever you associate two words, out of proportion. Out of this world, it should be weird. The linking has to be weird. The more the weirdness in your linking, the better is your ability to recall. Right? The more out of proportion, if you usually mangoes of this size, so you say, Big mango, visual as a big mango. When out of size also, size, it should be size wise. Everything that you visualize has to be uncommon. The more common you are linking, the less is your ability to recall. The more out of proportion you are linking, the more is your ability to recall. That is why people remember. Bad things faster. Right? Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes? Yes, sir. And boys will always link bad things. So they can remember faster. I don't know. 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 So, if you want to remember, always remember, you have to link what you want to know with what you know. Using these methodologies, it should be weird, it should be out of proportion, it should be out of size, it should be everything other than what is normal. And it should be one more thing that you should visualize is to remember in action. Not, it's not one word. Don't take it as one word. Most of you <laughs> link words in, in as one word. In action. There's no action. Always link words, what you want to remember, in action, as if you are doing, you are going through the jungle, you are walking through the jungle. Police storm the aeroplane, they get into the aeroplane, and rushing into the aeroplane. You can never forget that scene. Correct? In the end you see all the villains getting bashed up, right? And police are wearing right in fact. <laughs> Everything has to be in action. The more in action, the more you remember. No, see, in, in 10 minutes you could remember so many things. Now, how many chapters do you have? And one full year you have. How many textbooks you have? Each textbook has 15 chapters, let's say. 15 stories. 10 textbooks, 20 textbooks, 20 into 15, 300 stories. 300 movies you see anyway. <laughs> no more leave for exams. <laughs> <laughs> and in a serial, you know what has happened last time in the serial, you will know, even if it is shown after one week, you will remember the entire scene. <laughs> no, 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 even if it is not repeated, you will see. That is because of these things. Whatever they show you on the TV, in the stories, in the movies, they follow this methodology. <coughs> and that remains in your mind. Same thing like that, you apply to your textbooks. Textbook is nothing but storytelling. Nothing but stories. Nobody has, nobody told you when I was young. 
until you now use this I mean idea. It is just a story. Every textbook is a story written by one author. You just have to read it as a story. Don't take it as a painful exercise. No. Don't take it as a way. I don't understand. It's painful. I cannot link. No. Everything is a story. And we storytelling is very easy. Okay. This is this is called linking. Now, what are the methods do we have to remember? Pegging. Pegging. Pegging is linking. Oh, I have already told you. Don't repeat that. Emotions. What are the methods do we have? One with emotions. Feeling. One with feelings you can remember. That is in action. Feelings. With feelings also. This is a methodology. Feeling is a methodology. Not here. It's not that. Like when I said, I mean, uh, you took the ma uh, mango, it was the mango pulp, the gold coins a lot of it. You felt, you took the gold coin and felt so good. Gold coin. <coughs> you got choked, your throat got choked. You thought it was mango pulp. You wanted to taste it, you were trying to taste, but then it got stuck in the throat. You can feel the pain. When you feel the pain, can't you remember what happened? Where you felt the pain? Because of the throat. Where did it, the throat pain? Because the gold coin. Where did the gold coin come from? Where did you get it from? Where did you, where was this marriage happening? It's all, it flows like water once you have. Okay. What are the other methods that you can, I mean I have hardly another 10 minutes I think. What are the other methods of memory techniques that we have? Any other methods that you can, that you normally adopt? Acronyms. 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 Any other methods? Acronyms. Acronyms. Yes. Acronyms, it is not called acronyms. I will tell you the methods of memory development. The first one, ah, correct. Who said that? Mnemonics. Yes. Correct. The other method is mnemonics. There are three methods of, only three methods in this world, temporary memory. The first one is called ingenious methods. Under the ingenious methods, you have pegging, you have linking and talking both, and you have what is called as mnemonics. What is mnemonics? What is mnemonics? Yeah? What is mnemonics? Would you have remembered the seven colors of white light? Vidya. If not, for Vibhgaya, the two in the same order you remember. And throughout life you are living with it, Vibhgaya, even without asking everybody is a Vibhgaya. Until you die you will remember Vibhgaya. And remember the white light is split into seven, those seven colors in the same order too. White first, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. It's the same order. Could you have remembered without the help of mnemonics? Like he said, mnemonics, short form. Mnemonics. Any other that, that you remember in this? Classification and diversification. If there are some 15 things, you classify it to their similar nature and you can... Okay, that's also possible. Like he said, Acronyms. You can take the first letter of each of these words, some sentence if you have. First letter. Now, for example, I remember. You know, I remember how to open a talk. How to open a talk, how do I remember? I form the sentence. And this sentence will tell me the first letter of each of these words in this sentence tells me what is the method that I have to use to open a talk. Opening a talk, opening a talk in the sense when I, when whenever you are talking to an audience, how do I start? <coughs> There's a methodology. You don't st straight away get into the subject. Did I straight away get into the subject? No. How did I start? Yeah. 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 The art of memory is art of memory. 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 Art of memory is art of mem
but that's me. That is, that is me. If we can do it, we are all youngsters. He is able to recall it so beautifully. The true art of memory is the art of attention. He was really attentive when I said that. I didn't say that, but I didn't know about it. People are presuming things. Okay, after that, there is another method that I used to get you into the subject. I didn't study the start. Yes, we get to the story. It's my life. Story tell. That's another reason. How we have talked. Why? Why? Some people are stuck with beautiful girls, some people are stuck with beautiful girls. One of my friends calls his wife a knife. Wow. Her, her state, statements are so sharp. Both sides are sharp. Wife is equal to knife, he says. Very clear. So he stuck with wife. I don't think he's a man at all. He's already thinking of the wife. The day, the day you know. Yeah, correct, correct. The day you know that wife is equal to knife, you will forget wife. <laughs> so mnemonics, cutting down into short form, uh, abbreviations, abbreviations and then all these things can, I believe in medical students they remember I mean, uh, the seven bones of the structure, hmm? how do they remember, they can't remember that, so they, she is too pretty, try to catch her, they use that statement. Each one of the first letters represents one bone in the human body. She is too pretty, try to catch her. Ask her a medical graduate. How they remember the... That's a beautiful way. Everything can be remembered. Everything can be memorized. It's only linking to what you already know. It's all associating it. For that first and primary requisite is attention. Don't that do Okay, so now you understood what is mnemonics. Yes. I don't need to tell you the mnemonics, okay? Yes. That is called ingenious methods. These are methods, ingenious, your own ingenious, ingenuity is shown there. Your own creativity is shown there. There is a second method which is called judicious methods. This is used in scientific, uh, I mean science. Scientific, scientists use that, judicious methods. What are judicious methods? Judges use that, deduce, step by step, judicial, judicial, judicial judge, ju, judging, judging, judging. Like for example, they have, they say, there is a, a gap left between two rail lines. You know why? Have you ever asked? Tell them about me, all of them are silent. Do you think somebody takes facts? You ask the question, why? Why? Yeah. Why? Why do the two rail lines, railway lines, I mean those lines are there, no? there's a gap left in between. The reason is, during summer it expands. If you kept them together, they'll expand like this, and the train will be off. <laughs> we'll all be on the other side. So that's why when summer it expands, they will try to catch each other. So these are called judicious methods where you use where you use the five wives and one husband theory. <laughs> five wives and one husband theory. That is a judicious method. What are the five wives? Five W's and one H. What are the five W's? Why, what, where, when, who, who. And the one husband, no husband, poor husband is? H. One poor husband. They always say husbands are poor, I don't know why. Correct? Because you are all You ask Mary to be the energy. It is that is why in the judicious method you use five and use one H. Okay, I'm giving you more knowledge than you really require in your age. You should be thankful to me for that, using my So you will 
take the necessary precautions and you will be happy there after. Okay? In the movies they show, they show in the end happy here after. But I don't know whether how many are really happy at this There after. Okay? Okay. That is the second method. Judicious method. Scientific methods, we always ask questions. Why, what, where, when, how, who, who, yes? That's it. The third method, what is the third method? I want to give you that exercise, third method. Mary, do you have five minutes? Yes, sir. 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 The third method is called, this should be done again in groups. Yes, sir. The third method is called mechanical. Not mechanical engineering. <laughs> third method is ingenious, you got the spelling, right? Ingenious methods. Right? Ingenious. And the other one is judicious. The first one is ingenious, second is judicious. These are methods used by you, creating, creating. Okay? The judicious are judging, demonics, how you deduce. Did I like to detect, detect it? You do that. The third one is mechanical. What is mechanical? Bayard. Bayard. Bayard, that's all. Huh? What is that? Yeah. King Ashoka was great, King Ashoka was great, King Ashoka was great, King Ashoka was great. You know it? You know it? Now, like, you are I don't know what this I don't know whether he is reciting the correct mantra. He doesn't know. Well, you and I know. He is simply employing. And he takes his dashina and goes. That he will have to go. Aha. Indra Hedi is there. So it's a whole mantra. Good in the dashing for you. Okay? So this is called by hearting, mechanical, cranning. Some boy, some little bit cranning. These are mechanical methods where you use. Sometimes you have to use mechanical methods to remember. Okay? Because there are certain things that you cannot I mean, understand. If you don't understand, what do you do? Chinese, for example, Chinese words. Somebody said, Ching Chong Shu. How do you remember his name? Ching Chong Shu, Ching Chong Shu, Ching Chong Shu. Even if you forget, even if you you don't know how to say it, your tongue is already rotating inside you. Well, you have said ching chong to me enough number of times. Even if uh, the memory cells fail you, the tongue will say ching chong. <laughs> yes, you are not using your full capacity. Your ears help you, your nose helps you, your mouth helps you, your tongue helps you, your eyes help you if your brain cells fail you. Know that. Only that you don't use them. Use them for all long reasons. Okay? Let's see whether you can buy hunches. It's a tough one. Let's see whether you can buy
right? If you can do this, then you are ultimate. Nobody can be you. Okay, who's going to? I don't want. I'm not forcing any one of the groups. I want you to come voluntarily. Whoever wants to come voluntarily, I want only voluntary participants. Okay. understand each other, at least they understand that they do not understand each other. Then they understand each other better than when not understanding each other. They don't even understand that they don't understand each other. Beautiful. He said it almost somewhere he lost the plan, but then he said it very well. Very well. Very close to the table. Did you understand what he said? Yes. yes sir. Understood? Yes. Sir. No. No. Okay. Can you repeat it? Let me say If two people do not understand each other, at least understand that they do not understand each other. Then they understand better. Then they understand each other better than when they do not when they are not understanding each other. Then they do not even understand that they do not understand each other. Okay. Good. 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 Yeah. If, if the audience understands what you say, then you have repeated it correctly. If the audience does not understand what you have said, that means your repetition is not correct. Almost you are closer to what is written there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sir. If two people do not understand each other, then uh, at, least they, at least if they understand that they do not understand each other, then they understand each other better when they were not understanding each other. They do not even understand that they do not understand each other. Because what happens is you you are not getting the rhythm. Okay, fine. You got you got the meaning. You got the meaning. Yes. You want to try again? Anybody else? Yeah. If I, when I tell you, you will be able to follow it. Anybody else wants to try? Okay. You want to try? You want to try? Come. Yes, yeah, right, no uh, If two people do not understand each other, at least they understand that they do not understand each other. Then they understand each other better than not than not understanding each other. It, they do not even understand that they don't understand each other. Very close, but she missed out two words, who and when. She missed out two words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me let me repeat it. Let's see whether you can understand. Okay, the word, the sentence, the path is a paragraph and the sentence, one complete sentence. If two people who do not understand each other, at least understand that they do not understand each other, then they understand each other better than when. Not understanding each other, they do not even understand that they do not understand each other. <laughs> if follow, follow very clearly. If you follow what the, I'm using even intonation. I'm using voice modulation so that you can understand. If two people who do not understand each other, at least understand that they do not understand each other. Then, they understand each other better than when not understanding each other, they do not even understand that they do not understand each other. What do you think this is, a, I mean, a puppet show? You want, you give, you give me chavi and I keep dancing? If I keep dancing to your tunes, then uh, you hold the key to my show. Right? Okay, fine. One's repetition is fine. Is that? Yes. These are the three methods of improving your memory. Okay? There is no other method. These are the three methods that you have to every now and then keep using these methods in one way or the other. And if you want to, there are no other methods like how to remember telephone numbers. How to remember telephone numbers? 
How do you remember the telephone number? Give me one. Give me one. Give me one. Give me one. Give me one telephone number. Nine double eight six seven. Nine double eight six seven. Zero two one eight four. Zero two one eight four. Eight four. How do you remember this? Nine double eight six seven. Nine double eight six seven. How do you remember this? Again, by means of a linking only. Two digits each. What is the peg picture for 98? What is the peg picture for 86? What is the peg picture for 70? What is the peg picture for 21? What is the peg picture for 84? Peg picture for 98 for me is... Huh? Minus T and Y. No, no, not each. Two, 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 two digits together. You can't do it one digit. You can't have only one digit. 98. No, 98 I have for this B there is a language called memo, I mean a phonetic language In the, using the phonetic language I can create <coughs> page pictures for all the numbers that I want I don't have time to teach you that because it is a long process <coughs> if you want to read I will give you the name of the book ok 9 is represented by B 8 is represented by F. So I will form the word B. <laughs> yes. I will form A, E, I, O, U are free. They don't represent any numbers. Vowels don't represent any numbers. So I use, for me, by 98 is B. 86 again. F. 6 is J or CH F and CH or J you can use what is the word that you have? Fetch, fetch. yes F E T C H fetch fetch beef beef fetch that is get beef correct <laughs> 70 7 is represented for me by K and this is all phonetic language the phonetic language each digit is represented by an alphabet Okay? K. 0 is represented by S or Z. Okay? So what do you have for K and S? Yes. 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 <laughs> somebody wants, somebody is asking that B for me to kiss. <laughs> 2. What is 2? 21. 21 is for me 2 is represented by N and 1 is represented by T or D. D or D. Or you can say not. Beef, fetch beef, not kiss, don't kiss. Don't kiss with him, yes. You can remember his number very easily. Yes, you can remember his number. 84. 84 F and 4 is represented by R. For 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 itself. Fear, fire, fetch beef, beef for fetching. Not for kissing, otherwise you will get fired. <laughs> okay, this is how you remember telephone. And you will never forget this for a lifetime. Never. You will have to remember whose number it is and then associate this number with that person. Now, unless you use this, because we have this, we don't use it. We don't use our memories. I told you that night. Any sound in the body that is not you, it will die. It has to be activated. The only way of activating is using you all possess wonderful I mean, uh, memory cells, but you are not using them. That's the problem. Do more number of exams, write more exams, talk more on the subject, discuss only your subject. Let me see who will fail you and see it. Yes. Nobody can. Nobody on this earth can. If you do that. Right? That's the beauty. That's how we remember telephone numbers. That is where you use pegging. That's pegging. 
that is pegging. Okay? Linking, pegging, a mechanical method. Anything else? No, sir. No, sir. And remember, there is one more, remember in names and faces, no time. I can, if you are all strangers, I could have done that exercise too. For that, we will need a little more time, maybe 15 to half an hour. So that cannot be done. So these are the methods. Anything else you have? Doubts? Any doubts? Any doubts or shall we wind up? Yeah. That uh, I am coming to the last part. I believe, I mean, uh, after attending a memory workshop like this, one uh, patient went to the doctor. Uh, even after attending a memory workshop this, like this, he said, Doctor, Doctor, I have this problem of forgetting. I just attended a memory workshop and I don't know what the methods of memory <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no, he's forgotten. That's why he's doing it. So I forgot uh, the methods of memory development. Can you help me? He thought it was a medical problem. So the doctor said, first pay my fees. <laughs> so good night, all the best. Please attend, it is a, it's going to be a nice walk. 